Good day and welcome. My name is Dino Kapic. I am a BIM manager and an applications engineer at Moderna AEC. Today, for the BIM Harambe Africa, I will present BIM for Healthcare. Before we start with the BIM process and healthcare, I'd like to draw your attention to the following term, Uber syndrome. We define the Uber syndrome with the following statement. So if you've never heard of the Uber syndrome, take a look at this. When a competitor with a different business model or idea enters an existing industry and outshines the competition. Let's take Uber as an example for this statement. If you think about the existing taxi industry, they were almost overshadowed by what Uber was doing across the world. The old method of hiring a taxi became tedious. Uber basically gave you access to a taxi service that can track, monitor, follow, and socialize at all at a touch of a button. And if you think about it, we're all using it. It sits within our pocket. It's not just Uber, but the likes of Amazon, Autodesk, Google, change the way we do shopping, use technology, and even work. So how did these companies outshine their competitors? What changed? Well, the first thing that has changed are these little devices. So if you think about it, smartphones have changed. 20 years ago, we were using cell phones, but now all of a sudden we stopped referring to it as such because of the capability that come with our new devices. So smartphones are becoming smarter devices. There are better features and upgrades available every day. These phones have become much easier to use in the last five years with apps that almost guide everything we do from social networking to tracking the time. Every day we see more and more compatible apps that change our lifestyle. Uber, Amazon, BIM360, Google, and more have changed the way we viewed our device and utilize it even. Better connectivity around the world means wireless services like the web make it easier to access so much data anytime, anywhere. But it's not just cell phones that have changed. The internet itself is changing. So how, how are we, if I can actually put it this way, how is it changing? Well, take a look at the first aspect, connections becoming better and faster. We are seeing the likes of 3G, 4G, 5G, take shape in a short time frame. And these elements are there to better our access to the web. People around the world are gaining access now, socializing continents apart. If you think about it, you can talk instantaneously with people all over the world. It makes it feel so much smaller now. Web compatibility is integral to our smartphone devices. Without it, our devices are almost obsolete. Think about texting via WhatsApp or Viber right now without an internet connection. Please keep in mind that in this presentation about BIM, we are going to look at how technology will help us leverage how we do things now and in the future within a building life cycle. Technology and the Internet of Things will push BIM standards in healthcare. Let's take a look. BIM can be spoken in two different variations. The first one we refer to is building information modeling. This will affect how we design and share data within a project between architects, engineers, contractors during a design and construction of a healthcare building. The second variation is building information management. This will affect how contractors and facilities management teams and even the client 
manage their data around the building life cycle after design and construction. BIM does have some requirements and will affect people and data in healthcare, regardless if the building is being designed, constructed, or managed. One of these requirements is new technologies. This will affect how we track items like drawings, documentations, and even assets at any stage of the project. Another requirement is data dumps need to be done away with, slowly giving rise to one common data environment, which should be handled in the cloud. New workflows and standards will affect how we design, construct, and manage healthcare facilities. Are we able to track data that was designed for by the designing team for facility management uh, members to use right now with the current standard that we are using? Do they get to see the history of the building during its life cycle? The answer is simply no, because a lot of it goes missing. Another requirement is skills. New skills and roles are coming into light. BIM managers, BIM coordinators, BIM technologists were roles that were never existing or in existence 10 years ago. The roles we are seeing now are actually evolving and growing. Access to data at any point in time for the healthcare facility projects should be instantaneous anytime, anywhere, in order to track and monitor the building life cycle. So when we talk about BIM, yes, we talk about standards and procedures, but these items are all linked back to data. Remember, it's all about the data. Let's take a look at the old uh, standards of the building life cycle. What we're going to do is we're going to look at basic phases and how each phase affects us. And we're going to start with the designing phase. This is where the project team collaborates in order to have a design in place. And this is usually for contractors to build from. But contractors and facilities management are not involved. And the worst thing about this phase is all the data created in this phase usually stays in this phase. When we move through to the next phase, construction, there, uh, this is where now contractors have to take their new teams and use the data that was designed for in the previous stage. The problem here, though, is different data storages are used on both sides and phases. So mismanagement of uh, data occurs coordination and issues can't be properly anticipated for during construction until it is too late. And yet again, all the data that is accumulated in this phase stays within this little bubble. When we move on to the next phase, handover, this is now where the construction and design team have to hand over all the information they can, usually from their data storage environments to a new one. Not all data goes through effortlessly. Data that should be increasing quickly and should be manageable end up in old storage rooms full of old paper and old promises. And again, all data handed over usually stays in this tiny little bubble. When it's time for the facilities management team to start handling the day-to-day -day activities of the building, with the data that was given to them from the handover stage, items usually go missing as the team has to now look for, upload, recreate, redesign. And this becomes a problem. And again, the issue here is that the data forming stays in this little bubble for facilities management. The moment we need to go through a reconstruction of the building or a reconfiguration, we now need to go create an addition to what is existing. So what happens during this stage is we usually have to hire out inspectors to come and inspect the building 
to see if there are any old pieces of data. We are paying them from our own accounts and we are wasting time just looking for something that should have been given to us from the very beginning. And the problem with this is we have to start all over again in this endless cycle. So let's summarize the issues here. Every single phase has a siloed data storage environment. When I talk about siloed, I'm talking about a system or process that is isolated from the others. This causes data not to migrate between phases efficiently, results in huge data losses. Data, again, in these isolated bubbles are rigid and stale. They don't grow to what we expect. Data has to be recreated multiple times, resulting in time, cost, and reputation loss. Have you been in any one of these three because of the current building trend? Let's take a look at it from a different perspective. Let's talk about the building life cycle and the BIM approach. So how is it going to affect us? Well, the one thing I need to stipulate is we can't get rid of the phases because there are aspects that happen in one that don't happen in another. And you have to go from a designing phase to a construction phase. You can't go the other way. It's almost streamlined with how we've got these phases. So what if all phases, instead of feeding into each other, fed into a growing bubble. This bubble stores the data for all the phases of the building life cycle. And every time we add more data to the bubble, it grows. We refer to this bubble as a CDE, or common data environment. And there are two aspects with this item. One, it's a digital place where we store our data. And two, it's ever growing with the project life cycle. There are some benefits in having a CDE. For one, it's a place for all our data, regardless of file types being used. The CDE promotes collaboration, not just between phases, but betters the communication and collaboration, as well as coordination between all involved in the building life cycle. Remember, data grows in one CDE. The more it grows, the more need there is for tools to help us control it, and smart tools at that. Are you thinking now about your phones again? Because these items should link to the CDE. Data is no longer stale, but smart, cognitive, because these tools are web-based and can be tracked easily. And again, the CDE is a place for everything and everything is now within its place. We are no longer looking at old storage locker rooms for drawings that were done at the beginning of the project. No, it's there for us to access. We can see what was going on from the beginning stage of the project right towards the end. Remember, we can backtrack and recycle information that is existing rather than having to recreate it multiple times over. We save time, money, and our reputation in the industry increases because we are doing things a better way. This is something similar that happened with Uber with how they introduced their applications. They took something existing and made it better. We're doing the same with the of BIM standards and approaches. And again, this data cycles for us, so we can always backtrack, always. Let's see how this data grows between the old standard and the BIM standard, just so you guys get a trend. This graph shows the following trend when it comes to handling data during the building life cycle. On the X-plane, we have our life cycle broken down to phases from design to reconfigurations or construction. And then on the X plane, we have our exponential growth of data. And right here at zero is where the project starts. 
So at this stage or planning phase, we are following the tradition of planning before we even design. We get as much data as possible before we hand it over to our design team. But this is where we experience our first data loss. Usually not everything goes to the designing team. But if you're looking at it, it's not a lot of data that's lost because the design team will pick it up and design from there. As we move through the phases, I want you guys to take note of how data grows and gets lost. So when we're designing to construct, we increase the amount of data we're using. But the moment we go into construction, we lose data because the contractor has to now find and search for items that have been done away with in the design phase. He needs to know why it was designed like that, but doesn't have the means or the access to that information. When we go from construction to handover, whatever was designed for and constructed for needs to be handed over. But the problem with that is not everything goes through. Facilities management teams almost have to now recreate the data that was handed over to them. And this is a scary trend that we're seeing. And then again, when it's time to do new building works, all of a sudden, we've lost the data because design teams are jumping back on and the facility teams are not in collaboration with them. So we start the cycle again. And all of a sudden, that information, that project starts at this point. That's pretty scary to watch how much information we gather to how much data can be lost. If we look at now the BIM workflow, because we are utilizing a common data environment, we are seeing this growing uh, trend where it's, where it's literally just going from phase to phase and increasing slowly without data being lost. Now, if given the chance, would you want to start your project here at this point? Most of you would want to because you're not going to waste your money or your time or effort even to finding something that is not lost. However, we all fall into this trap that we start at this point and we are continuing this, life, uh, this uh, building life cycle and broken outdated system because we insist in the old ways. Think about it. This is like owning a cell phone from 20 years ago, expecting to have all the features and convenience of a smartphone, access to the web, instantaneous messages. We don't have that with a cell phone, but we do with a smartphone. And we've seen it work. And that's the main importance here. So when we talk about BIM, I want you guys to take note of four main aspects that we deal with in BIM principles and standards. The first one is the common data environment, which we spoke of. The second one is how teams collaborate in a building project lifecycle. And can anybody at any point in time join this collaboration process? We're also looking at how teams, clients, facility management coordinate information on the common data environment. And then finally, how are these teams utilizing this data, not just on the construction site, but during the physical uptake and day-to-day -day activities of the building? So we spoke about the common data environment and how it works, but how does the common data environment benefit healthcare projects? Well, it's one data environment, which means all information, documentation, drawing, assets are saved in one place to access. Access can be restricted for those who require specific data. This is a repository that gives you the history of the building. It's not just a means of saving data now anymore. The second aspect is there's no need for specific software to view and coordinate documentations. There's no restriction on tracking and seeing activities on a file, who did what and when. Data is at your fingertips 
And at the same time, I don't expect others to have specific software just to see my data. I'm sharing the information with you and I'm sharing it to the best of what the web can give me. Remember, this is keeping a history book online for all our documents, everything, even assets. And again, like I mentioned earlier, it's not just a storage, but a history book to look at. It tracks changes all the way back to the beginning of a project in order to understand the current problems or understand current problems in the building. And because we are working with a common data environment with so much information coming in, we're leveraging analytical data to see what is going on within our hub. So we are seeing people access our hub. We're seeing how many people are running specific issues, uploading a drawing. We are looking at the trends that are affecting our building life cycle. Could you imagine that now in healthcare? to see who designed what, when, and how, and also see who's managing these elements from one common data environment. And if people can't work with us in our CDE, we should be able to export our data out for them to use, for them to update it, for them to send it back, and then for us just to upload it back again. And it's not just exporting the data out, but we can leverage this to create reports, schedules, drawing outcomes, documentation elements, and more. We have this power in the common data environment because of new technology that is being created on web-based platforms. And that is increasing every single day. Let's take a look at BIM collaboration. So BIM workflows are all about collaboration with other members. At any point in time, members to the CDE should be able to jump on and see what is taking place and shape. All members should be able to use data provided in the common data environment to better the design or the construction or the maintenance of a healthcare building. So what is the benefit of moving to a virtual 3D model on a common data environment? Well, one, each discipline has their own model that combines into another creating a virtual twin of the physical building. Individuals might be from different AEC backgrounds, but all share a common goal and thus create a build that we can use in the CDE. Having the power to section and filter the model online, offline, without drawing specification packages, help us visualize what is being done. And this can be done when the architect, structural engineer, and MEP service engineers start coordinating their buildings together effectively. They're building a virtual twin, basically. This data is not just for the designing team. It's not just for QSs to pick up on. It's not just for the client to see a pretty picture, but we can leverage the data even further for contractors and subcontractors so they can pull the information they require. Instead of giving them a 2D drawing on a paper to build from, give them access to a 3D model and let them see the design the team have vision. Let them see the data attached to that. And again, all members are not restricted to a drawing software package to view the data. Users can leverage smart devices, whether it's a tablet and a phone, or even a laptop and a web browser, to interact with the models on site during construction or in a meeting in the project office. You get the ultimate access to the data. Giving team this much access leads to better collaboration, not just between design and construction teams, but for all those involved now or in future throughout the building life cycle. When we talk about BIM coordination, 
we want to develop a virtual model. And because our design team and construction teams are working together, a new term starts to be coined. And we now speak of a digital twin. So this is where now the virtual model is created with such precision that it becomes or represents the physical building that is either existing or being built. And what are the benefits or how does this affect healthcare buildings? Well, think about it. Better coordination between the teams. So teams can start coordinating live while they design. Visualizing 3D models is much easier and effective than coordinating a 2D plan. There is no need to imagine what a line represents when you can see the 3D object rendered in that space and time with the data. Could you imagine that for healthcare drawings, for healthcare designing teams, for healthcare coordination, for services? Since we deal with a digital twin, we coordinate and predict clashes on site that can be solved for during design phase. And we don't have to wait for the last minute during construction phase to fix a clash. This is already saving us time and money to reroute ducting, piping, cable trays, or even rebuild walls or redesign rooms and spaces. The CDE makes it easier for us to coordinate a federated model that will represent the physical model. And if we all build to this model, the physical item will look identical. Just one is in a digital space and one is within the physical space. And just because we get rid of, or just because the team leaves after design and construction doesn't mean the next team can't utilize this federated model. Think about assets that are placed in the model at that same point in time as the building. We can monitor and track mechanical, electrical, and interior assets even more now if we introduce these systems to our facilities teams. They understand what has now been created and why. And because we are leveraging this in a common data environment, Facility management teams can utilize third-party applications to build software to help them go even further in coordinating their elements. We work together to create a virtual model, and we'll, we can do so much more with it at any point in time when it comes to the building life cycle. Let's talk about BIM on site. Please look at the following image for a moment. What do you see? Do you see happy people working on a site? I'm sure you do. Do you see that it's almost effortless at how they're looking at a drawing? But if I had to tell you this, this is actually pretty misleading. And for all of you who've been on site, I'm sure you can understand that there is some difficulties. So I want you to reimagine this image. For those of you like me who've worked on site, there are a lot of issues when it comes to documentation on site. Think about printing the documents. There's a lot of items to print. Think about handling paper on site. It can be very frustrating. Yes, the picture makes it look easy, but I'm sure most of you actually, like me, have placed it down on the ground just so we can look at it or mark up or go through the drawing. It's never as easy as it looks on the picture. And if we lose our drawings, we have to request a new one. And that's the worst case because there's a delay or even a charge that comes with it. And we have to wait for these documentations. Running any type of quality during inspection as, uh, can become even more frustrating because now it's more documents to handle, more things to carry. I remember going on site with a bag that's going to host a file of drawings. It was pretty heavy to deal with. So what if we change the approach? What if we leverage the CDE for construction team members? I want you guys to take a look at the following picture. 
And what do you notice about this picture now? Because construction teams now have access to the CDE, what they can do with the data on site is absolutely amazing. If you look carefully, do you notice that the benefits of having a smart device on site outweigh the need to print documentation? There's even more. What if on the smart device, we can run inspections, checklists, quality controls, safety controls, and we link that to the common data environment? Again, we're not saving it in some old storage locker room on site. It's all on, it's all uh, pocket away, if I could say, on your cell phone, on your tablet, on a laptop. There's no more that need or frustration for paper. So let's look at some more benefits that come with utilizing BIM on a site. One, because we're working with a virtual model, contractors and site agents have a better understanding of what to build as they don't have to perform a guesswork, but can visualize from a virtual model and predict what will come on site. The day is coming where designs on paper for construction sites will be unnecessary, unnecessary because of the power of web-based technology. And if you think about it, again, not everybody reads from a 2D drawing. Not everybody has that skill set. But if you show them a 3D rendering, immediately people will understand what is being built or designed for. Analytical data for contractors help them see when drawings and models were published, help see exact changes and updates on documentations, on drawing files, on 3D models. There's no waiting time, which means less delays, which means less money being spent on wasting time gathering information. Because we are using the common data environment, we are able to build templates that the whole team can use on site inspections, a standard for everybody to adhere to, to follow. That in itself holds more power than everybody running their own different systems that we have to draw data from. If we keep everybody to one process, one standard, we have better outcomes and we can handle the data a lot more efficiently. BIM on site is here to give contractors the necessary boost to collaborate and coordinate even more with designs they build from. The communication between all members on a project is streamlined. With this type of access to data, we all become better at what we do. We have the means to leverage information for a better building life cycle. And then all of a sudden, People want to work with us because we are doing it far more effectively than those who are still on the old systems. So BIM protocols and standards are not just some type of pipe dream or fantasy where we are in constant search of this treasure box that will never be found. Take a look at this company. They're known as A3 Architects. They are a professional team within the architectural industry that work here in South Africa. But look what they specialize in, healthcare designs. We reached out to our uh, A3 and we spoke to Nelson, who is a BIM technologist for the company. And we got his view on working with BIM collaboration tool sets. Take a look at his statement. He simply summarized it for us. He said that he utilized applications like BIM 360 and Revit in order to do authoring tools for site work. He went on further to say that the work is the same. The only difference is that they're saving it to one platform that everybody can go see and use from. The idea that they can back up in the cloud helped them a lot as well. Everybody could work remotely, even during the coronavirus lockdown. And this was all, again, hosted in the cloud. 
they saw the benefits of utilizing design collaboration within their team. And they could pick up when certain consultants were not working with the latest model. How about that? During the design phase, like that, you could find out who is not working with the correct items. And that's not a phone call away. That wasn't by email. That was because they were utilizing BIM standards. We asked him again, when working with BIM coordination tools, what did you guys notice? And he goes on to say that they stopped talking about coordination as a global trend, but now as something they can do in their own projects and clash for. If I told you that in their projects, they were able to see that models did not sit on top of each other. So they made sure that designers and consultants were coordinating on one specific spot and creating a proper federated model. It was a simple way for them to communicate as well and see the design trends. It's not just architectural industries that are picking up on BIM standards in healthcare. We reached out to a company known as Biggin here in South Africa. And Biggin are a professional team working within a multidisciplinary engineering industry. And not just in South Africa, but across Africa. And they now specialize in healthcare designs and protocols. We spoke to Etienne, who's a senior engineer drafts person at Biggin. And we got his thoughts on working with BIM standards. He highlighted the importance of healthcare facilities now in 2020 because of the coronavirus outbreak. But what he pointed out specifically was BIM processes and tools that made it more efficiently and quick to work with. All of a sudden, it became an easy workflow. He went on to say that BIM saves lives. Could you imagine that statement that BIM saves lives because of how we are now designing the process? They said that when it comes to saving lives, every second counts, of course. And the same could be said with the construction of healthcare projects. Because they've got a means to do it quicker, they're doing it. They're constructing healthcare items much more efficiently, but at a quicker rate. We also got his thoughts and we asked him the effective use of their common data environment, collaboration tool sets, and even coordination. And they said that BIM processes and tools helped get the design team in one spot and made it feel like they were working together. How about that? You were on a project where people were genuinely working together for a better outcome. It's not I'm hoarding this information but I'm sharing the data because that data in itself saves lives. And again, they're utilizing a cloud-based platform. They're collaborating between other teams and they're coordinating with a federated model. Keep in mind that BIM is not just for the designing phase. We reached out to a construction company here in South Africa, Trendcon Construction. This is a professional team with in the construction industry here in South Africa, and they specialize in all types of construction and have now started in the healthcare sector. They too are utilizing BIM. We spoke to Mark, he is a site inspection, uh, he's a site inspection quality manager for his healthcare sites. And we asked him, what was your experience on BIM on construction sites? And he said that the professional team was on board because they were utilizing them. Keep in mind, Trendcon is, in, uh, is working with A3 on several healthcare items. So the idea is that there was a streamline of coordination now between the users. And again, it assisted them with all issues being recorded and sold on site. There was no waiting time. They didn't have to wait until the end of the project to start running quality controls. They started now on BIM processes. We also asked him about BIM coordination. 
And he went on to say that clashes and design issues can be resolved right then and there between relevant engineers and specialists. Okay, how about that? We could coordinate clashes like that and were resolved immediately because of the communication that BIM standards and processes uh, have. So again, BIM 360 or BIM in itself is not a pipe dream fantasy. We are all adhering here in South Africa now to these new standards. And we can see the benefits of it in all types of projects, including healthcare. BIM is not just a standard that is being used in parts of the world. It's also being used here in Africa. And that in itself is admirable because projects utilizing BIM are appearing more often. The fact is data is becoming easier to handle the more we produce. Remember, it's all about the data. Old standards of CAD workloads, isolated data silos, non-collaborative teams, broken coordination, and even paper systems are being done away with slowly. So much like the Uber Synod, BIM is facing the same item. BIM is the new standard that is the new competitor within this industry and environment. Think about the BIM processes. It's a new competitor with a different standard and process that entered an existing industry and it's outshining the competition with better and faster elements. And how are we doing this? Well, look at how BIM is affecting smartphones, smart tablets, smart laptops. We're not, no longer referring to them as their individuals, but smart devices. Smart devices are better now for office collaboration, team coordination, and even analytical tracking of project data. Smart devices are easier to use for the convenience of linking to the common data environment for all the data we require, anytime, anywhere, at any point of the building life cycle. BIM applications are becoming the norm. It's a must. Applications for design, for collaboration, for coordination, even site work applications are being created to make your smart devices better in office by third party application. And these items are always being updated and upgraded. Applications that link to the CDE make connectivity to the web and data so much simpler. It's a click away. If I can tell you now, I'm running most of my stuff on my cell phone. It's that easy. It's not just cell phones that have changed. The internet has changed as well. It's becoming a lot better. Think about it. Greater connectivity means we have access to our project data anytime, anywhere. Everyone has access to the web already. Everyone on a project at any point in time in the building life cycle can easily access that data required and backtrack to what they need. There's no more recreating of this. There's no more searching a old file cabinet for some dusty blueprints. Web compatibility is also now integral to our smart devices. Without it, our BIM standards and processes are boring. They're not there, they're almost obsolete. It's making us go back. But because the web is ever developing and our connectivity is ever getting better, we are utilizing it to the fullest potential. We can perform some amazing feats in healthcare building, thanks to the implementation of BIM. Technology is growing and with it, this building information modeling and managing systems are streamlining the industry, much like what Uber did in theirs. Don't think that BIM is not being utilized in Africa, because it is. That type of thinking will keep your process rigid and stale. Watch this continent surprise you with what they can achieve with the BIM standards and processes. So looking at BIM standards and what it can do for you, 
are you going to join a better way? Or like the old taxi industry, are you going to be left behind? Are you going to become outdated? I want to thank you guys so much for your time and patience. That is my presentation in terms of BIM within the healthcare sector and of course buildings. I hope everybody enjoys their day.